Healing Our Village presents COVID Conversations. Where does she get her information from? Do you do you watch TV with her? All of these things that we Learn find in African safe. Americans increase your susceptibility to getting the virus, especially this more contagious Determine Delta Determine the facts. Right now, in hospitals throughout the country, but most certainly in Hear the from South. the community. What happens if it's positive? So you do not want to take the risk. You need to ask those questions. Like what made you come? Because I want to get vaccinated so me and my family won't have COVID. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Xavier Bryant, and I'm here with, with For Your Help. And today we'll be discussing COVID-19 and children. I'm sitting here today with the esteemed Dr. Helena Bentley, who's a pediatrician, and today we'll get into exactly why COVID-19 is important in children, some of the things that we could do to prevent COVID-19, and some of the vaccinations that are available for children at this particular point in time. So can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Dr. Bentley, as he said. I've been practicing in my own practice for 34 years now in the same community and I serve an underserved population in an underserved area. And we just there to take care of people. And what I started that practice 34 years ago saying, I want to go where no one else is so I can provide the same quality care that people may get up in Johns Creek, up in uh, Buckhead. I wanted to bring it to the south side. And prayerfully, I've been able to do that. Uh, I guess so, because I've been practicing for 34 years. Absolutely. I um, still have fun with what I do. I enjoy it, and hopefully I can practice a little while longer. Absolutely. And when it's time for me to retire, hopefully it was not be because I'm ill or something else going on. But I want to be there for the people, and I am an advocate for children. I'm an advocate for the children in the community that I serve, and an advocate for their families. So I'm here to hopefully impart some knowledge so they can also be on the same page where we are. Absolutely, absolutely. And as an advocate for children and for their parents, what exactly have you seen in that underserved community during your practice? I have seen everything. And so we have to remember that most illnesses are brought to their local doctor, the primary care before they make it to the hospital. People right. think that folks that uh, academic institution know more than the people in the community. Right. Everything starts in the community. Absolutely. We refer them to the hospital. We refer them to the specialist. So we see everything. Right. We've seen um, the devastations of children not being vaccinated, not just for uh, COVID-19, but for all vaccines. Right. We have seen the uh, devastation. We've had to uh, resuscitate patients in the office. Really? You know, before they get to the hospital. So we see everything. Uh, severe asthma, we see we're the ones that feel the node that send you to the hospital and you're diagnosed with uh, leukemia, lymphoma, mm -hmm. whatever it is, it starts in the community. Right. And so it feeds into the practice and then we send them where they need to go. Now, yes, we do take care of a lot of uh, patients that won't come. Um, on a regular basis, or this may not be their first stop, even though they may have a primary care and they go directly to the emergency room. But for the most part, everything starts at the patient center medical home. Indeed, indeed. Now, in terms of COVID-19, we've seen children who got infected with COVID-19 develop serious complications, um, such as the multi-system inflammatory syndrome. And that's a condition that affects different parts of the body that become inflamed, whether it's the heart, the lungs, kidneys, uh, the brain, skin, or eyes. So with that in mind, why do you think that we should vaccinate our kids at this particular point in time? Well, we also have to know that even though we've seen kids with MISC, that's still pretty rare in children. Okay. We don't know which child would develop it. And, right. it's, and from what we've seen over the last year to it's been a little older kids sure. as opposed to the younger kids, but there are some younger kids, even in the state of Georgia, we have uh, read about children that have had MSF, MISC. Indeed. Uh, and some have passed away because of that. Now, usually with uh, the MISC, 
that is a complication. So a lot of times those children may present and they do a COVID test. The COVID test may be negative because that infectious stage has already passed. Right. So right. this is like after, after. the fact. Mm -hmm. It's like when I tell uh, parents about strep. Okay, you had a sore throat a month ago. Now you come into my office and you got blood in your urine. That's a complication of untreated strep. Indeed. MISC is a complication of the COVID-19 infection. So there are other things that go on. You know, you got the you got COVID pneumonia that hospitalize most of the patients that we see. It's the COVID pneumonia, not the MISC. You have kids that may have asthma. They get pneumonia. They're hospitalized because the asthma attack got worse and there's no way to calm it down on the outside. So there are a lot of other complications. MISC is just the one that has we have talked about the most because it affects multiple, and that's why they call it multi-symptom care, because multiple organ systems in your body, and you get real, real sick from that. Mm -hmm. And but when they go in, the test may be negative, and they say, oh, I didn't have COVID. You had COVID, you just didn't know. Right. So then they do the antibodies, and that's how they know they probably had a past infection. Indeed, indeed. So do you recommend children actually receiving the vaccine? I sure time? do. I recommend for all children that are eligible, I recommend that they get the vaccine. It's a hard sell in our community. True enough, true enough. Uh, just like uh, any other vaccine, flu vaccine in particular. Uh, but it is a hard sell. A lot of the teenagers want it. Their parents may not want it, but a lot of the teenagers want it because the teenagers are ready to do what teenagers get to do. And uh, parents are afraid uh, mm -hmm. the vaccine is new. We, we still have people that's resistant to uh, HPV vaccine. Right, right. You know, they, and even though now it's being promoted, it prevents cancer. In their mind, it's a new vaccine. And they don't want it. To, well, I'm just going to wait and see. Make sure it's okay. And, and, and billions of people have already gotten the vaccine. Right. So how do you how do you circumvent that? How do you move around that uh, that resistance when it comes to parents not getting their children vaccinated? Well, for, I just give them the best information that I can give them concerning the vaccine, how safe it is, and in comparison in comparison to having the disease versus the possible side effect of the vaccine. Right. So that's what I do with all vaccines, not just with COVID vaccine. But I do, I compare the possible side effects versus the risk of getting the disease True. Yeah. and the complications of this disease. Indeed. Now, I know one of the main complications of, uh, well, one vaccine, well, one of the complications of the vaccination uh, was myocarditis. Can you explain that a little bit and how that plays a role in this and how we can better help individuals understand what this even means. They, they heard about it, but they, they really don't understand that right. much about it because that is extremely rare as Indeed. well. And it actually happened with a certain vaccine and a certain population of kids. It was the older males and, uh, that were getting it, that you see that. But the rate of myocarditis was very, very low mm -hmm. compared to the rate of getting any other side effect or compared to you not getting the vaccine right. and you getting disease and then you got pneumonia Indeed. and you got M MISC. So a lot of times they hear that and they focus on the, that one particular thing. Mm -hmm. if, you re if you read the package insert, and you're a pharmacist so you know, you read the package insert of Anything you take, not just a vaccine. Right, anything. Tylenol, cold medicine that they want all the time. <laughs> anything. You read the package insert of any of that, you wouldn't take anything. Right, everything has its side But effects. they don't read the package insert. They hear one little thing, tibet, and that's what's stuck in them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one... Once you hear that one negative, it's 
hard to bring that positive back. True enough. And so it will take a true sale. We we have to say, you know how, and forgive me, I don't mean to offend anybody, but you know how when you play the lottery, you have a one in 44 million chance of winning a dollar. Hope that two dollar ticket. <laughs> so when you play the lottery, the 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 percentage of winning is so minuscule, mm -hmm. but you don't stop because I might be that one. Right. Not the rest of that forty-four million. Well, the same thing happens when we're talking about the risk of side effects with vaccine. It may be one in four million that you have side effects. I might be that one because if I'm that one, that's a hundred percent. So it's hard to try to deter people when they got that mindset. So the best thing that we can do is just educate them about the safety. Also educate them about what happens when you don't get it right. and you get sick. I think that's going to be the main thing to do. And what you hear is that you have people that have been sick. And once they are sick and they tell you, I wish I had gotten the vaccine. Right. I think, I think, but I think that actually will help people know to get it more than us just spewing out percentages. So real examples of individuals. Who right. Been people infected. that you know. Right. People mm -hmm. that you know. Oh, I had a relative. I had a friend of a friend who passed away. I think that kind of triggers that. Or you got uh, COVID and you know how sick you were and how much you hurt. Uh, you had to go to the hospital, but they sent me back home because there was nothing that they can do. Right. I think those people can help the folks around them as opposed to us always saying, well, you know, this is very safe. One in 50 million people have a, mm -hmm. a reaction because those numbers really make no sense when it affects you. True enough. Okay? Real, real testimony. Real, make, you need real sense. testimony right. because that one can be 100% True. when it affects you. Understood. Understood. I have a question. Um, I, I had a, a number of different patients uh, who were 65 and up who had questions about getting a booster about four or five months ago, but now many individuals have already jumped on board. What do you think about when it comes to children receiving the booster? Do you agree with that? Oh, yes. Okay. I agree with the recommendation. Science is science. Yeah, okay. Indeed. Whether you believe science or not, it does not negate the fact that they did this research and this is what, what it is. Indeed. So just, you don't have to believe it for it to be true. Okay. Okay. And I think that's where we have to help folks to understand. And then this is the other thing about belief. When it comes to say, oh, I don't believe in it, it's true. It's not about you believing it. What it's about is whether or not you accept it. It's the fact. It's a fact. Right. So a fact is fact regardless of whether or not you believe it. So it's do you accept it? How, how can we make this work for you? That's called And work. I think that's yeah. right. And I think that's where we got to help people. Indeed. And we have to help them to understand that the decisions that they make personally affect other people. It affect the elders in their family. It right. affect the little people in their family that's not able to get a vaccine. You is no way if you have a baby that you will allow somebody to come in your house and you know they got COVID. Right. But yet we may go to a club. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and say, well I'm wearing my mask. Well if if I'm clubbing and if I decide to order a drink, so far they have not created a mask where I can get that drink without taking it off or lifting it up. And all of those people in there, every night you would see some club with a line of people That's outside. True. So can you imagine what it looks like on the inside? And so it's not just that. It's when you, Super Bowl coming, and I love watching football and if the Falcons were there 
you know, maybe I would consider, but we don't even have to worry about it. See how the <laughs> Lord just be protecting me? So we don't even have to consider <laughs> me going to the Super Bowl. Not this year. <laughs> so, no, and maybe not next year. Yeah. So, we'll, we'll see. So we'll, we'll see. see. But my point is, is that when we have a popular activity that everybody likes, they risk their health mm -hmm. by going to these things, knowing that they're not adequately protected right. because you think I won't get it. Yeah, I totally believe it's a it's an individual responsibility for a communal Correct. effect, right? Um, but at the end of the day, a lot of individuals are tired of being in the home. Most individuals are tired of wearing masks. They are they're it's almost like society is trying to normalize us again to where we didn't have masks and, and pre COVID. So how do you what, what recommendations do you have for parents, for children at this particular state in the pandemic? Get the vaccine. Get the vaccine. Simple as that. Indeed. If, if most of us, if not all of us that are eligible would get the vaccine, it'll be okay. Right. You know, we get the flu shot. There's still going to be some folks that get the flu vaccine that will still get the flu. Same thing with the COVID. But it won't be as severe. Right. And uh, it decreased the rate of hospitalizations, meaning that you don't won't be hospitalized. It decreased the rate of death from the disease, mm -hmm. meaning that it won't be severe enough that you would die from it. Yes, you may still have some coughing and some congestion, maybe a little headache, a little sore throat. Right. You have to be off work for now they're saying five days. Um, but it decreased the severity. So, so the best way to normalize our lives again, we either have to get the disease or we have to get the vaccine. Right. One, One or the other. other. So other. which would you choose? You know I mean? and, and I'm a physician that has needle phobia. But if I had my choice, disease versus vaccine, vaccine you can you stick know, me okay. all day. And I've had all three vaccines. And if they had a booster, another booster, I'll take the other booster. Interesting point. Do you feel as though there's going to be a booster every year? I think at this stage with all these different variants coming up, mm -hmm. I think it probably will have to be. Right. Because the strain, unless they pick out whatever this mRNA uh, particle that they have put in the vaccines right now, unless it's something that's centralized to Every strain, which we know it's not because Omicron has already let us know, unless it's something that's centralized to every strain, that's the only way that we would not have to take any more boosters. But Omicron has shown us that you don't get 100% protection for every strain. Indeed. And so because of that, I do believe we probably will get another booster you know, until we are able to get these strains under control and we won't have to worry about that anymore. Now, if that was the case, why we have to get a flu shot every year? Because that virus is able to mutate every year. Yeah. Every year. And they are they give us a vaccine that they are predicting that's right. Will take care of whatever strain is gonna be out there. And we won't know until it shows up. Right. Same thing's gonna happen. They didn't, they didn't know Omicron was going to be a doctor, mm -hmm. but it happened. Right. But the yeah. good thing is that vaccine will lessen the disease even if you get it. That's right. Okay, okay. Well, how should a parent prepare a child for a COVID-19 vaccination? Same way they prepare them for the other vaccines. <laughs> okay. You know, you coming in, you're getting a shot. You know, once you get that vaccine, what I tell my parents to do, they can... Um, Massage the arm with a warm cloth, mm -hmm. whatnot, just not, try not to stiffen up. Uh, coming in, the little bit of children, we have a few little bit of children say, I want a shot. Most of them don't want a shot, <laughs> okay? And they scared when they come in there because they say, I'm getting a shot. They don't want a shot. So it's actually hard to prepare a child for, mm -hmm. for any type of shot. You don't want to mask the symptoms so and this is what we say with other vaccines as well a lot of parents want to uh, pre-treat with Tylenol or either ibuprofen right uh, so how you know if they're going to have a 
inflamed response if you're already treating it because you're masking all of that. So we try not to pre-treat with any medication. Wait and see. If your cow has fever, then you can give the Tylenol. If your cow got aches and pain, then you can give the IV trophy, as long as they're not allergic to any of that and it's age appropriate, of course. Um, but we try not to pre-treat other than hydrate. That's why I tell people to hydrate, 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 rest, try to uh, relax so you won't tense up. Indeed. Okay, understood. understood. What, what is your thought about, because the vaccine isn't available for individuals under five at this time, what about that population of, of children who are in daycare? And how do you see that playing a role in Omicron or any other variant that's to come? Well, you remember when uh, COVID was first came out, they were saying, oh, the children can't get infected. That's oh, what the they children were would not spread. Who spread the most disease in, children. in children the world? All the time. Okay, children. So we know they spread it. Mm -hmm. However, their little bodies tend to handle it a little bit better than ours. You know, you if you, again, going back to strep, a child with strep, yes, is sick, feels sick, but if you got strep, <laughs> you ready to go to the hospital. Right. Okay. So if they have it, and they're going to spread it a little quicker, in my opinion, because they can't help it. They love on you. They kiss on you. The nose is running. They like to share stuff. They like to touch every little thing. That's how they learn. They like to touch things. So unless you're going behind every child and wiping everywhere the little hand touch, you can't protect against that. Right. So uh, until, and it, I believe that the vaccine will be available for them very, very soon. Of course, it's going to be a lower dose, uh, but I believe it's going to be available. And I think the we can vaccinate the daycare age kid, I think that'll make a greater dent than when they were vaccinating the first responders and mm -hmm. the elderly initially. And, and my reason why is because we know kids help spread disease. The reason why they started with the elderly and the first responders, the elderly, of course, because they get the sickest and they die quicker. Mm -hmm. They can't fight off them. They, they, they get sick. So let's protect them. And early on, that's who was dying, the, old, the older population. Right. And then they said, oh, now you got these comorbidities, so if you're obese, so if you have this disease, you have that disease, you're more at risk for severe uh, problems with COVID or death with, with COVID. Uh, most of the children, well, we do have a quite a few obese kids, but they don't have all of the other diseases that, that the elderly have, mm -hmm. the comorbidities. True. But, so if you got a child that comes in, and we've seen a lot over this past month or two since Christmas, um, with a runny nose and cough, in the past we would just say, oh, you got a cold. Right. Okay, upper respiratory infection. Now guess what COVID starts out at? What's that? Upper respiratory infection, <laughs> right? A snotty nose, mm -hmm. a cough. And then once you swab them and they start getting the other issues like the flu, flu, upper respiratory infection. Mm -hmm. It's the complications of these diseases that cause the problem. Right. Not the runny nose and the cough in and of itself. It's the complications. That's why you get the flu vaccine. That's why you get the COVID vaccine is to prevent the severity of disease and the complications from the disease. I like the way you put that. Okay, so what side effects might children experience from the vaccine? I think they can experience the same side effects that uh, adults do. You get tired. I loved it because I slept good for three days. <laughs> three days, it was wonderful. Uh, soreness, of course, it, it hurts. Your arm can be sore for a few days. Right. Redness, swelling in the area. Some some kids may have fever, headaches, and grown-ups too. So True. they basically have the same side effect uh, profile. Generally, not as severe and as uh, longer lasting as grown-ups, but some of the same profile. For me, the um, tiredness was a blessing because when I'm working, I get off work, I go home and do all the paperwork. And it, it actually was not tiredness. I slept well. That's how I'm going to put it. 
because I was not tired. And then I would be sitting there typing, you know, finishing up my notes, maybe watching TV. And I said, hmm, I think I'll get in bed. Mm -hmm. It's not like I get overwhelmingly sleepy. It's I get in bed, 8.30 at night. I'm in bed. Usually I don't go to bed till 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. But after that second shot and that third vaccine, I'm looking forward to the fourth, the fourth vaccine. <laughs> go to bed at 8.30. I sleep until 6.30, wake up, refresh, do that three nights in a row, I'm all caught up. Yeah, you all knew. All I'm right. all knew. I hear that. So, so people, some people worried about that. I didn't worry about that. Sure. My mom uh, slept a lot when she got it. Uh, that didn't bother her either. My aunt, who is 91 this year. Blessing. Yeah, it is a blessing. My aunt, who's 91, she was kind of worried about Sleeping a lot, mm -hmm. yeah, but not me. I <laughs> come, I get another one. I right. can sleep that good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, in conclusion, what will you leave um, parents and our audience with as far as some words of wisdom when it comes to COVID nineteen, when it comes to vaccination, and just making sure that we're all trying to get back to homeostasis as a society. Okay, first off, the vaccine is safe. The vaccine has proven to be safe. It's a lot of misinformation out there. And when parents tell me they say, I say, who are they? Who are they that say that? You know. So the vaccine is safe. The side effects or the risk of side effects from the vaccine is a lot milder than the risk and the complications that you will get from COVID-19. The best way to get back to a normal life is either get vaccinated or everybody get COVID. And if everybody get COVID, we're increasing the death rate of some groups of people. Get COVID or get the shot. One or the other. One or the other. And you heard it here. And I, and I always like to let my patients know that it's all about awareness. So whether or not you've been vaccinated or not, make sure you're still getting tested. Make sure you know what your status is so that you can quarantine and stay away from other individuals and stop the spread of this particular Omicron variant. So once again, this is Dr. Xavier Bryant. Dr. Helena Bentley. And we are concluding today with our COVID-19 talk. Thank you, Tom. Hi, this is Dr. Lenora Coleman, president and founder of Total Lifestyle Change and Healing Our Village. I sure hope you enjoyed the episode today with Dr. Helena Bentley and Dr. Xavier Bryant talking to you about COVID-19 in your children and in your teenagers. I think that you heard them say clearly that you need to get your children vaccinated. It's just so important. These vaccines are safe. As you know, the Pfizer vaccine has been approved for children um, under uh, between 5 and 12. Um, Moderna is still for those folks who are 17 or 18 years old and older. You know that Pfizer is applied for the younger kids as well. So these vaccinations are here. We need to get your children vaccinated. We need to get your children to get their booster. We're actually doing um, testing and some vaccinations here at Total Lifestyle Change. If you need to get tested, you need to know your COVID status. We're right here at 177 North Main Street. We've also opened up over at the Divine Faith Ministries, uh, located at 1522 Monday Mills Road. You know the main sanctuary is at 9800 Tower Boulevard. Again, Divine Faith. Um, we're working with Bishop Battle, and we want all of you to come over to get tested. On Saturdays is when we do our vaccinations. And so we're here for you in the community to get yourself safe, to get yourself healthy. You need to not be concerned about the safety and efficacy of the vaccines. But if you refuse to take them, and there are some people who are just not going to do it, at least know your COVID-19 status. And the only way to know is to get tested. So please, we're here to help you. For more information, you can call 800-788-0941 to figure out our COVID testing locations. 
and the hours of operation. Again, Dr. Lenora Coleman, thanking you so much for tuning in. And we look forward to you seeing more of our episodes of For Your Health. For those who have never seen it, we have a lot of them up on our YouTube channel at Healing Our Village Official. Also, you can go to our website, www.tlc-global.org. Go there and you'll see all of our COVID-19 conversations. Thank you so much. Take care.